everybody. It's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. We are just moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team. Two teams trying to stake their claim to postseason football. Week 14 of the NFL is underway. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. shot right away and he bats it away and it falls down incomplete Debo Samuel the rookie whiteout his intended receiver that'll bring up second down and the offensive starters here for Los Angeles and this offensive line they're gonna have to be a lot better than they were right there we certainly won't measure them just by one play but they definitely got a big challenge ahead of them in this one because this defense, they love to run blitz and they clog up the running lanes. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw, Brissett. Ebron caught left side. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. On second and 11 now. Brissett, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brady Jarrett in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Sean Jackson off to the races. Touchdown, Jaguars. Talk about flipping the script. That punt return, 86 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. They get the stop defensively, force the punt. They score without their offense even stepping on the field. I remember playing and playing on special teams and teasing the guys on offense. Like, look, you don't, don't even worry about it. You guys just hang out over there. We'll bring this one all the way back and get the points we need. In this case, they actually got that done. Lutz with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. Well, we know he has home run hitting ability in the punt return department, and he showcases it there all the way back for six. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And drive number one for them was a punt. We'll see what drive number two holds here. And oftentimes you think to yourself, okay, second possession, let's go ahead and open things up. Let's get a little bit crazier on offense. Maybe it wasn't a matter of that. Maybe they just missed a block or two, and maybe they had the right plays called. Sometimes it's just the execution. Let's see if they can execute a little bit better on this drive. 
time for a look at our starters here on defense. It's quite a unit, that's for sure. Number one in the NFL against the Pats. And when you're getting ready to face the number one overall offense in the NFL, it does not matter where you rank defensively because you got your hands full. You don't know what you're going to face, but you know that that's a strong unit that you're getting ready for. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now Brissett. Out of the backfield, he's got Jordan Wilkins. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. On second down now, it's Wilkins. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third down. <laughs> On third down, Brissett. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 70th catch for him on the year, and like so many others, this goes for a first down. Here's Benny Snell Jr., the rookie from Kentucky. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself a, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. We got this. So that flag will cost them 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. They run the counter. Wilkins. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. On second down, it's Snell. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Trying to run for it with Snell. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. It's a first down following a gain of three. First down, Brissett. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. The numbers from last week's game for Ebron. Six catches, 74 yards. And he's number six in the league in receiving yards, and he plays for his team first, but he also, in the back of his mind, he's thinking, if I can get to the top five, that might affect his bonus in his contract. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front, so when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're gonna build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Well, Dan Bailey now for the field goal try. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports.
Bailey's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice Let's job go. there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Here's a second and two now from the 33. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Wentz now on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Von Miller in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. After the sack on first down, Wentz, he's got this one complete to Paraman. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. <laughs> I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. To throw his wins. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. 33 yards that time. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about the big plays. Let's face it, that's what we absolutely look for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Jack Doyle, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Their deficit is 11, 14 to 3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. First down, Los Angeles. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. 
A gain of three, second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Push him back, push him back. Throwing, Brissett. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 41-yard line. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, it's Wilkins. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. The Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, here's Brissett. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 14. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The so, coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. To Travis Brissett. This will be caught at about the five. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And Bailey able to knock it through. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Still more than a minute to go, so there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Melvin Ingram make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use your aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. To try again after the sack. Wentz. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Wins. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Here's Jamie Gillendale. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. 
The Charger drive about to get going. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one for him. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brady Jarrett has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And he's going to go down again. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Here's Brian Anger now. Remember, his first attempt was returned for a touchdown. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores. Now proceed to the start of the second half. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. It's time for our player spotlight right now as we get a look at Carson Wentz. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line. They... Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Oh, design run for their wide out. I don't think anyone in the building fooled right there as that one is going to blow up in their faces. It'll be a loss of seven on the play. And it'll be a second and long. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me is balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Von Miller, he continues to wreak havoc in the offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Get it 
First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. That's a good-looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed, and pretty well executed there. And this one is right down the middle. And that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Shaquille Barrett in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Got his target, Samuel. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Looking to throw on second down. Brissett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The rookie DK Metcalf, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Brissett now. Short little throw to Ebron. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Play action now. Brissett. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's the perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game, and for a second... I thought they had it right there. Now looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. It's a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. 
Get your backs to the goal line. I can hear my high school coach right now. This is what force meets force. Got to be physical in order to win this battle. <laughs> yeah, that's where the physicality pays off. A nice job forcing the contact and forcing the incompletion. Yeah, Coach Ford would have loved that play. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Rush coming, and he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field goals. Oh, Brandon, but with six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Let's go. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever. Ten yards there, good enough for the Jags first down. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's hit on his first nine passes now in the ball game. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football here. They'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and ten. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And finally marked down at the 42-yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. The shotgun handoff to Prosize. Oh, no, he lost the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Come on. Throwing on first is Wentz. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this there. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Staying on his feet. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Melvin Ingram in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So his second field goal in the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible, but here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. 
And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, but guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. The Chargers on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's Bissett. Completes it to Samuel. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great, and they're fun. They become a little more ho-hum. Trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Craven LeBlanc with a pick. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt, and in a big way. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. So after the INT, here's Wentz. He hits his running back, Procise. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. On second down now, it's Lindsey. Touchdown, Jaguars! Philip Lindsey with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. When you know you've got a home run hitter on your side of the ball, and you know that he can score from anywhere on the field, it usually inspires the rest of the guys to do their jobs even better. That resulted in a lot of great blocks downfield because they knew if they gave him space, he could do exactly what he did, put the ball in the end zone. Lutz good on the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. 
Brissett. And this is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. On first down, Lindsey. They'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. On first down, right back to Lindsey. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On second down, it's Lindsey. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. Out of the gun, here's Pro Size. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So for the Jaguars, 